What is up, everybody? Solomon here. Super excited to be at Consensus 2024, interviewing a multitude of ecosystems and builders across blockchain and Web3. Equally excited to have the opportunity to interview Meta Parlikar, who is the CTO of Casper Labs. Meta, I would love if you could maybe walk us through the past, present of uh, Casper and talk about that evolution. I mean, there's a lot of innovation going on consistently, but what are some of the key highlights for you over the past year and, and even currently? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, the evolution of Casper, we founded the project in 2018. We completed the first and only liveness proof for the Casper consensus algorithm and then implemented it in Highway. And that was a 1.0 of Casper using a WebAssembly engine. And we launched the protocol in March of 2021. Now we're getting ready to launch our Condor upgrade, which is a major upgrade. We have a new consensus mechanism. We've, we're always looking to improve, right? So a new consensus mechanism, brand new exciting features, including a novel gas mechanism that will essentially make transactions free on the chain. Wow, that's awesome. And you talk about real world adoption. I think like the pulse of the industry, it's always interesting to look back a few years and then to look at where we're at right now, it sounds it seems like almost every single day there's something that's that's being adopted from like the real world. Um, and I feel, I feel like we almost become like desensitized. Like were any of these like real world announcements of adoption three or four years ago would have driven like two or three months worth of content. You guys have notably had a recent initiative uh, that was announced, which is uh, in collaboration with IBM. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so we're building a very exciting product, which is an an AI governance product that integrates with Watson X with IBM and IBM is co-developing this product with us and we intend to go to market together on the product. So we're extremely excited about this. You know, having a responsible AI is something that's top of mind for everyone. Um, you know, that doomsday model of when AI hallucinates or starts kind of going off the rails, particularly in multi-party systems, it's something that we really need to be conscientious of. And so we're looking to lead the edge uh, of technology and innovation with IBM on that. That's fantastic. And I think one of the cornerstones of any network across all of blockchain is obviously developers, developer onboarding, developer experience, making sure that there is th there's resources and help. And can you maybe talk a little bit about, you know, up to, to, up to you know, today's date, like where you guys have been with that developer experience and how you guys are planning on kind of, um, you know, making sure that you're cultivating developers and a rich developer journey moving forward. Yeah, definitely. So obviously the, the Casper Association's got a very rich grant program, right? That is the standard table stakes in the Web3 ecosystem. So we obviously have that to help developers when they choose to build on Casper. But also from a developer experience, we have a, a Rust native experience built by the core developers for developers. So we dog food our own developer experience when we build smart contracts for the Casper protocol, even for our testing. So we consider Dev UX at the forefront. We've since then had uh, upgrades and infrastructure built on top of the core protocol to help bring Solidity developers onto Casper. So there's, uh, with the Audra 1.0 release, very excited about that, built by a former core protocol engineer um, to help Solidity devs come onto Casper. What's been in your experience? Like, I, I mean, I know these physical events are, are really kind of great to go to because you can almost, network and make connections in like two or three days that sometimes take months to kind of um, accomplish. But from your standpoint with like network recognition of Casper, do you, ha do you feel like this year you, ha you guys have a lot more people coming up asking about Casper, asking about real world adoption than previous years? And how do you foresee that kind of moving even into the future at, at, at further events? No, I definitely feel like there's a lot of interest in Casper, particularly with the Condor upgrade. People are very intrigued about you know, gasless, tra gasless transactions and some of the new features coming out in Condor, such as contracts that'll pay for their own computation, contracts that pay for other computation. It creates a very interesting paradigm in a decentralized world, how you can streamline the user experience for real B2C type of applications, where people don't need to hold any crypto at all to interact with a smart contract. We feel that opens up the world of Web3 in many areas where tokens have been regulated out. Now, I think one of the interesting things, and, and you and I have talked about this before, but I would love if you can maybe educate our audience here. What does kind of differentiate uh, from a utility standpoint, the Casper network versus Ethereum? So like, you know, the other ecosystems out there, I guess, how are you guys similar? And where do you see Casper really excelling that kind of differentiates? Yeah, so definitely on the technology front, the ways we're similar is we're permissionless and we're decentralized and we're proof of stake. So from that perspective, anybody that wants to participate in the network as a validator, or if they want to acquire CSPR and stake it, 
the underlying utility token, we operate just like Ethereum. And in fact, we're more egalitarian and more accessible than some of these other protocols. Where we're different is when you want to use the protocol as a developer, as a business, and you need to have control over what happens on chain with your contract. That is where we're very different. Because we believe that em enterprises and entities need to conform to regulatory requirements. They have to service customers. They need to be able to upgrade and change their contracts. And they need to be able to manage who has access to what. And Casper really shines there. How do you feel like the, you know, obviously DID and decentralized identifiers and decentralized identity certainly plays a role in a lot of where, where adoption is going to go. Of course. And that's not just identity of people. That's identity of places, things, data, all the other aspects that tie yes. in. How does that kind of circular economy type aspect tie into what you guys are facilitating through Casper? Well, we believe the product, so the protocol is turned complete, right? So we believe the protocol's job is to facilitate building on top of it, whatever you can build on it, right? And one of the core precepts for DID is, if I have an account, it can't just be an address. An account in any application you see is like an entire structure with a whole bunch of stuff inside it, right? And our account model allows that. You can store data, you can run code inside your account. There's a lot of very interesting applications that can come out from a very rich account model, which is what Casper has natively, and the security of those accounts are managed and maintained and enforced through consensus on the protocol. I would love if you could lead us out by, you know, just your vision uh, of the Casper network in the future. What are you excited about? How do you kind of foresee Casper really impacting, you know, society as a whole? I got, you know, I built Casper because I believe that there needed to be decentralized options for people that wanted to build on decentralized permissionless public networks. And I know that enterprise is using a lot of consortia and private networks. And I believe that there needed to be a bridge there because the reason they couldn't use a public decentralized network is because they didn't have the control they needed. And so for me, my goal is to see enterprises, small, medium, large businesses, starting with developers that want to grow these massive Web3 companies, I would love for them to see the benefits of using a protocol like Casper because they'll be able to build something that's sustainable for the future. Do you think, and, and this is just kind of a sidebar as we close out here, I mean, I, you know, we hear about tokenization, everything will be tokenized, which, you know, you could take that to different levels. Um, I guess the question I have is, as regulatory clarity becomes a little bit more flushed out, verifiable credentials, mm -hmm. all the things that kind of tie in, how do you foresee like real world enterprise and businesses? Will they be, you know, acting on, on chain and, and participating in DeFi or is there emerging? Just your thoughts kind of as a whole for adoption moving forward. I don't see TradFi using DeFi, honestly. Um, what I do see happening is I see traditional finance leveraging decentralized ledger technology to basically up, you know, uplift and really flip the paradigm that they're using. Um, inside their back, op back office operations. And I believe it's going to take a long time. Yeah. I think this is different than what a lot of people at, you know, at this conference believe, but I think we're at least seven to 10 years out um, because they move very, very slowly. Um, we are innovating very rapidly and all the feedback we're getting is we're just too early. We're just too early. So my goal is that ultimately they'll build on Casper. That is what I want to see. That's, my, that's what I believe we've built, but I think it's going to take a long time. It'll be interesting, though, too. I mean, I think that uh, you, you make a good point where we do hear kind of the everybody's just going to rip and replace and go to blockchain. Yeah. Um, but I do think like like you guys, you know, are mentioning with, you know, the smart contracts and upgradable aspects and being able to actually programmability is such a catchphrase. Yeah. But we don't really see it. Yeah. It's just like, let's talk about it, but not yeah. do it. Yeah. But you guys are a little bit unique there where yeah. it's like these uh, real world enterprises they need that ability to make decisions and not just have something exist forever. Exactly. So, <laughs> I mean, exactly. It, yes. but, so then that, that gives you opportunity for maybe real world businesses, enterprises, the SMEs, and even the, the you know, the bigger ones to still have the current infrastructure that they have, mm -hmm. but maybe plug and play some things exactly. that make sense. Exactly. That, that is, that is the capability of Casper is allows you to build your contracts incrementally on chain. You can build them and version them incrementally on chain. You can, you know, just as you do in production environments today, you could have multiple versions of a product and switch over from one to the other with a flip of a switch. That's the way software is built. And the Casper protocol will act very much like NPM. You know, everybody uses NPM. It's a very technical term, but it's basically all of these package management, library management systems 
that power everything that's built on Linux today, right? And so when you talk about developer user experience, you also have to think about how do I launch my code? How do I maintain it in production? How do I upgrade it? All of those things go into DevUX. It isn't just writing the smart contracting and pushing it to the blockchain. Now what? It's just the first step, right? Now, how do you continue that software development life cycle? And how does the underlying protocol help you do that? Yeah. It's interesting too. Uh, I mean, I mean, we could go on forever on this. And I know that we've had the pleasure of interviewing you a couple of times. We're looking forward to future ones. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Again, Meta Parlakar, the CTO of Casper Labs. Meta, look forward to having you again Likewise. in the future. Thank, thank you for you having so me much. here today. That was good.